Hello everybody. I am excited to start the first IG Lab of our series. I'm just waiting for Catalina to join us and I will add her in. Let's see. Happy Saturday, everybody. Hello. Hello. Just waiting for Catalina to hop in and we'll get started shortly. Oh, there she is. Okay. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everybody. Catalina, whenever you get a chance, if you want to just request to join, we can get started. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you guys are. Oh, there we are. Okay. View. Go live. Super excited for today. This is our first IG Live of our new series, and Catalina is our first guest. Hey, Catalina. Hello, Megan. How are Hello, you? Everyone. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope you are all good. Of course. Too. Yes, I'm super excited for today. We'll just yeah. give it a few minutes um, just to let everybody join. Sure. Hello, everybody. Hello. And we'll get started. In a minute or so, we'll get started. Wow. Love yeah. the names. <laughs> I know, right? I like seeing yeah. everybody. How's your weekend been so far? It's only Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> it's not much. Every weekend yeah. <laughs> at the moment. The only difference is that we have today sunshine and mm -hmm. minus degrees. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Old. It's gray and cloudy here. I think it's supposed to snow where I am today. Oh, you see, we have the same thing. <laughs> I know. Okay, let's give it a minute or so and we'll sure. pop right in. Do you have any weekend plans besides this? No. No? Really not. No. Hey, Maria. Like, yeah. Just enjoying uh, my home and my cats and my yep. husband. That sounds okay. good to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it okay. is how it is, right? Yep. Sounds relaxing. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. can get started. I'm just saying hello to everybody. Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. Hi, my adoptee wife. Hi. Okay, so today is the first IG Live of our new series. It's called Lift Our Voices Up, and we're really trying to highlight everybody in our community. Um, there's just so many stories, amazing stories, projects, um, people doing different things in their lives. So we really wanted to give them the space to kind of share. So that's what we're going to do today with Catalina. Um, Hold on one second. I'm just waving to people. Hello, everybody. So we will get started. Um, Catalina, I'm really going to give the floor to you today and because you have a lot of amazing things to share. So if you wanted to start out, maybe just saying your name, where you live, a little bit about your adoption story, if we want to start there, if that works. Yeah, just let okay. me. Yeah. So the volume is up. Good. So hi, everyone. For the one who doesn't know me, my name is Catalina. I live actually in Switzerland since over 30 years. <laughs> I was uh, adopted in the 70s by a Swiss family in Colombia. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the moment, what I had uh, released or healed or as you want to call it, is that I really, I can really say today that I'm a complete new reborn person. Mm -hmm. I'm really me 100% after all this That's awesome. work and, and yeah. crying and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Uh, okay. Hi, everybody. Hola. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, so do you want to share, I know you wanted to share today about Adoptee's Healing and kind of the work you've done in your book, all of these different things. So wherever you want to start, totally up to you. Yeah, I start at the very beginning as every adoptee because um, I realize a little bit too late. No, a little bit late. Mm -hmm. I just leave out the two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that uh, we all have this adoption trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, I realized it at 48. Mm -hmm. um, the reason was is that I've, I used to feel since very young my intuition. But I use also to like not hearing it and say, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. slow down. Yeah. 
but I still had, I always had this inner, inner desire and also this inner knowledge that there is something more mm -hmm. uh, that means I am something special. Mm -hmm. I thought for 48 years that I was weird, that um, I couldn't fit in as every adoptee. Um, and yeah, I decided at the age of 48 that I, I have to really change something, but I didn't know how and I didn't know yeah. what. Mm -hmm. I just was at that point that I knew that there is something mm -hmm. has to change. And as, I soon, this, this, as, as soon as I took this decision for myself, for my soul, um, and I opened like my heart and all the, the answers came to me. So I met beautiful people. I had uh, a lot of, a few mentors and, and life coaches during my life. And I, I read a lot of books and mm -hmm. I heard thousand times the secret yeah. and I have the audiobook in my car so I started there oh that's good and uh, it took me I would say really two years to mm -hmm. really uh, became the best version of myself and to really let go of of these old patterns and these old limiting beliefs that every one of us carries inside because we had a lot of influence, of course, during our lives, through mm -hmm. the, the school, through friends, and especially, of course, through the families. Yeah. And we, adoptees, has two families. And there, uh, there is a, a mix of these two cultures. Um, for example, in my, my situation that I'm uh, Swiss and also Colombian, this is mm -hmm. really the, like the opposite cultures. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it was it wasn't easy, but really I have to really say it was so worthy because today I can really say that I heal. I have healed all these traumas, mm -hmm. and for me it's important um, to let every adoptee know is that there is healing. There is some healing possible. I also thought my whole life that I have to really live since I don't know eighty ninety years uh, with this with this. Um, not worthiness with this adoption trauma that you you feel not understood i mm. i couldn't express also myself i had this the chakra here my, my throat yeah. was completely closed and i wasn't able to speak but no one told me that thank you cecilia <laughs> no one told me that yeah. that there is a way to heal and that there is a trauma and that you can do something about it mm. so this is so important for, to me to let you all know that there is a possibility to really live the life that you want and also to that you are able as anyone else to mm -hmm. switch your mindset to your way of thinking feeling and all the emotions and you can really be yourself mm -hmm. i did it a little bit late at 48 i would love to have known all this information minimum yeah. 20, 24 five years ago but it's mm -hmm. okay it is how it is we cannot change yep. it so this is the, the, the main topic for me. And okay. uh, because all that uh, things that I have done, uh, first of all, the trauma and then the healing, and I had really a lot, uh, made a lot of he different kind of healings. Mm -hmm. I went, for example, for more than eight years to a kinesiologist. Oh, I have done dancing therapy. Mm -hmm. I have That's done family constellations. Mm -hmm. So I had really... Uh, when I heard something or I read about something that I, I, something was interesting to me, I, I tried it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is how I really got a lot of knowledge. And of course, I read a lot of books. Yeah. Do you mind me asking? So I know you mentioned you did mentorship yourself. Um, what was that experience like for you? I'm, I'd imagine that it would be hard, but also you turn, it turned out well in the, in the end, it seems like. So if you don't mind sharing a little bit about that with us, I think that would be good. Yeah, um, it was like I, I told you at the beginning, it was really um, feeling in every cell of my body that I can mm -hmm. really be myself and that it's okay how I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I used to blame myself because I was too loud. Mm -hmm. I was too nervous. Um, I was too emotional. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that this was not good. But to find out during uh, this mentorship that every single uh, person, it's okay how it is. And yeah. that you just have to forgive yourself, to learn to love yourself, to learn to let all this old stuff uh, out and give it away and, and heal. 
is that uh, made me today very proud of myself. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the most beautiful of, of all this inner work is that you will hear it from any, any life coach or mentor or, mm -hmm. or someone else who is really um, doing this work is mm -hmm. that when you change this, the whole surround will change. Mm -hmm. So I use, for example, I use always to, to work and uh, to work just for paying bills. Yep. I really can mm -hmm. say I never worked in a place that I was like, oh, yeah, I love to work mm -hmm. there. Yeah, and there's a lot of us like that. Yeah, you know that. And there was always, the problem is that there was always my boss mm -hmm. wasn't not, how, how can I say, it wasn't not good enough. Yep. And I was experienced that uh, 25 years. As soon as I as I made this healing and this this uh, mind changing, I I realized that it wasn't my bosses; mm -hmm. it was me, mm -hmm. the one who was attracting the wrong persons because mm -hmm. I had all these uh, limiting beliefs and all that inside of me. Yeah. So, as I told you, there will be, of course, there will be also the other part when you do your inner healing is that mm -hmm. friends or family members mm -hmm. will disappear. Mm. Oh, someone will tell you, uh, what's happened with you, Catalina? There is something wrong. I don't like, I don't like you, you knew you. So, but then you can decide, okay, is, is this person mm -hmm. allowed in my, in my inner circle? For example, sh do I need she or he in my life? Mm -hmm. And then you can sort out. And at the same time, you will find amazing uh, occasions, situations, and people yep. that come to you and you are like oh my god this happened yeah. to me really i met one uh, a good friend i saw her this morning actually i met a good friend she's venezuelan mm -hmm. and she grew up in, in the u.s also and we met each other for the first time and we were like oh my god you're like my sister yeah my sister from another i don't oh. know era and country mm -hmm. and parents mm -hmm. but it was amazing and of course the situations as i told you the situation and the biggest uh, breakthrough that I had was really after my first year of healing and crying. I was, I have to really yeah. stay. Um, I was one year in a mentorship program, which okay. we were working really deep every about minimum one month, every okay. one weekend, every month, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, we were doing this um, this breakthrough session. So we were just the whole weekend working, I don't know, 40, 50 people oh, wow. screaming, uh, shouting, dancing. And wow. I, wa I was at the, at the first beginning, I was like, oh, my God, where I am. But as <laughs> soon as you, as, yeah, as soon as you <laughs> give this, this shame away, I would say, OK, no one knows me. So well, it doesn't matter. I just yeah. can't get out and that. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. And then, um, yeah, it is, it's, it's healing too. Dancing is healing. Shouting is healing. Writing down is healing. Mm -hmm. You can start with very simple things. So, yeah. yeah, after that year, I knew that I want to still continue to, to grow my mindset and, mm -hmm. and to look after other support. And then I went to a workshop to Colombia in January last year. Uh -huh. And it was a workshop from Dr. Joe Dispenza, which this Venezuelan friend mm -hmm. talked me about. Oh, okay. And I didn't know about this. And she said, you know, there is a, there is a workshop from him in Bogota, in mm -hmm. Colombia. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And I, oh, once again, I felt this, this I don't know how to call it. I, I call it this Latino DNA or Colombian mm -hmm. DNA. Yeah. I felt when she told me that, I felt I have to go. Oh, wow. Because I knew that the connection with my home country, Colombia, mm -hmm. was very deep mm -hmm. until then. Yeah, and nice. also the inner working, I just was imagining, me, okay, if I do uh, some workshop there and, and I'm there where I was born, it will yeah, be amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and it was. So uh, one day before I started the workshop, I found my two biological sisters oh, wow. from where I didn't have any single information mm -hmm. i really have to say that it was when i was giving to my swiss parents and i have to really say giving because they came to the house to my swiss parents and gave me mm -hmm. literally to them in the arms and and there was 
they were two women okay. yeah. who broke me. It wasn't my mother, but okay. two women who broke me. And they told my Swiss parents is, you know, we have to, um, the mother of this child has to give her away because she has already two girls yeah. and she's not available to look for a third one. Yeah. But this was really, uh, All the yeah, just mouth to mouth. And yeah. then uh, I met them. Wow. I found them, I met them and, and we were like, oh, I, I really, I have to really say until today, I can't believe it. Yeah. Because so much coincidence, mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. Yep. And how did you find them? Do you mind sharing? Yes, of course. Um, I have to expand a little bit because yeah. um, in my case, I just had the name from my biological mother my whole life. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just had that. Mm -hmm. And I knew, knew since very little that it will be a little bit <laughs> or some kind of impossible. Yeah, it's hard. Because if you just have a name and nothing yeah. else, no pictures, no address, mm -hmm. nothing. Yep. And then uh, that, that's why also I was like scared about searching mm -hmm. because I knew it's an impossible. Yeah. But uh, when my, my Swiss father, my father, I always say my father and my mother are my Swiss parents. Mm -hmm. And when my father died, this was like the impulse that I received also like, I don't know, something inside of me yeah. told me, okay, we can start now. And I started very simple. Uh, there is a, in, in Germany, there is a, um, a TV program which they search for people who are disappeared. Oh, wow. And I thought, okay, I will call there. And I wrote them an email and they called me back, actually. Wow. And I talked about for two hours with a beautiful lady, but she told me, you know, your case, it's like an impossible because mm -hmm. we, we have, we need something to search. Mm -hmm an old address, a picture, something yeah. that we can start, when, but with a name. And my family name was Medina. This is like, okay. everyone is, is called yeah. Medina. The common name, yeah. Yeah, it's very common. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the last decision was, okay, for me, it was very clear. The only thing that I can do more for me to find someone is going to Colombia we were anyway going every every um, holidays. My husband okay. and I to spend holidays there. So during Christmas, and yes, exactly, Jim. During Christmas and the New Year, we went anyway uh, to, to Colombia. So I asked my husband, you know, it's okay for you if I contact in Colombia the television and the radio and I give some interviews. And he said, yeah, it's okay. No one knows us, so yeah, that's true. <laughs> So I did it in, in January 2018, I did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it, was, it was two television interviews. And in the wow. second interview, I found my, my cousin. Okay. And uh, it was, it was uh, extremely excited for both of us because yeah. she told me, you know, the, the, the few information that you have from your biological mother, the name, where she came from, what she was working mm -hmm. uh, then, and where she was working then, uh, they are exactly the same things with which my aunt made. Wow, that's crazy. And we were like, okay, but she told yeah. me at the end, she told me, but we didn't know that you exist. Mm. And when she told me that, my, like a world came down inside yeah. of me. I <laughs> always thought that my biological sisters or maybe my mother was searching for me or at least they knew about me and she yeah. told me that and I was like oh my god no one no one knew about my my yeah. life mm -hmm. but um on that time when I met my cousin she was able to give me a little bit of information about my sisters because they are like uh, five or ten years apart from her so they are not okay. so in different ages and yeah. my sisters grow up in her house when they were teenagers so yeah. they had like a, a close relationship and she told me you know um, I can give you the names from them but I don't know where they are because when they mm. were both about 18 so 30 years ago they disappeared oh wow and then I was okay, then. <laughs> but I was lucky to have any information, yeah, only the names. Mm -hmm. 
And what we did is that she had, my cousin has eight uh, siblings. So I, the, the day after we came back to Switzerland in this January, I sat with them down and I wrote everything on a paper, what they knew idea. about that. Mm -hmm. And I, it wasn't so much, but uh, as soon as I came back to Switzerland, I contact my lawyer in Colombia because during the same time I had to, to get a lawyer in Colombia because I wanted to get out my, my Colombian passport. Okay. And they told me that they, my whole paper things are a mess. Mm. They forgot when I was adopted in the 70s, they forgot to change my name from Medina to my Swiss uh, family name. Oh. So I was double. Oh, wow. I was as Medina registered and I was as Franga registered and, mm. and there were papers wow. in one office and other papers in the other office. Mm -hmm. So I really had to take a lawyer and my lawyer told me after that, that she never had such a complicated case yeah. as mine. It sounds she, like it. she had two years of like really fighting for my paperwork mm. and at least mm -hmm. in, in October, 2019 she told me you know now your papers are done your papers are really now perfect you can mm -hmm. really now get your, your colombian passport oh, yeah that's good and you ended so, up getting it, right yeah and so i gave her the names from my sister too and i told her you know uh, you can do another work search for mm -hmm. them <laughs> yeah but she told me from the very beginning it's a little bit also like very complicated to find the person only by name without having any birth birth uh, dates or really like the the id number and mm -hmm. after also after one and a half years he told me i'm sorry but i'm not able to help you mm -hmm. so on that january for one year ago what uh, the coincidences were that my cousin um she has a big family and I didn't know that is that she just told everyone in the family, if you know something about these two yep. sisters from Catalina, just give me a feedback. Mm -hmm. And that evening, it was the, the 3rd of January oh, wow. last year, we met each other for dinner, my cousin mm -hmm. and I, and on that night, she, she just told me, you know, one hour before we met, I talked with a, a cousin who were disappeared by 100 years and now he appeared again. And yeah. he, to he told me that he has a telephone number from your, birth from your sister. So on that night, three hours later at 10 p.m., we were able to have a video call with my middle mm -hmm. sisters. And because my cousin grew up with them, mm -hmm. she knew her very well. And she yep. could tell me, yes, she is, because you never know. Yep. Yeah, that's <laughs> because, true. Exactly. Yeah. So we were like uh, sitting there, the four of us, my cousin, her husband, me and my husband, mm -hmm. and crying. And yeah. my sister in, on the other side of the phone was crying too, because she was also happy and, and mm -hmm. surprised. And she also told me, I didn't know that you exist. Mm. So this was really wow. the, the amazing break, uh, breakthrough that I had. And I know that I did that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of my inner work, because of my intentions, because of how I learned to be open to the universe, how I was 100% aligned with yep. what I needed and what I wanted. And they came, bam. Wow, that is so powerful. Thank you so much for sharing yes. that. And, the, and as I always says, if I can do it, mm -hmm. anyone else can do it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I'm just going to go through for some of the comments. I forgot to yeah. read some of them. Um, Thank so you, Cynthia. The Listen to Heal Now said I had a closed adoption and the only information I have on my family is a roster sheet with their names and ages, no photo or anything. So similar to you. Yeah, said, same here. My siblings and my birth father didn't know about me. It was a 38 year old secret. Wow. Yeah, I was yeah. a secret too. Yeah, I um, really had to add of I know um, some of us don't have any any information or wrong papers or yep. papers. Yeah, you know what I'm talking so about. But, yeah. but I have to really say um, that doesn't matter. That doesn't really doesn't matter. Do you, when you really do your inner work and you, you're doing your healing, you are able to 
just be yourself as you are. Of course, there is like a bonus if you find some information, but mm -hmm. you can really be like more calm and more in peace with yourself mm -hmm. instead of really looking for, for family that maybe you will never find. Yeah, yeah. Um, Listen to Heal Now said congratulations. Thank the Butterfly you. Series said wow. Cynthia said so happy that she found her family. Cecilia mm -hmm. said hey everybody. Cecilia said I was also a 35 year old secret. I also have a cousin who was adopted. She was also a secret. Yeah, I think that's very common. I was also a secret yeah. as well with my birth family. I think there was one aunt that knew about me and that was it out of like yeah. a huge family. So yeah, and I have to mention also, uh, my biological mother, which is this, this is the only picture that we all have from her. This yeah. is my mother. She died in the 80s. They, um, she was the youngest from eight siblings. And the uh -huh. whole family was uh, a mess. They were fighting, fighting to each other. They didn't, they didn't spoke to each other. They were hating each other yeah. and so forth. So I was really a secret. So mm -hmm. my biggest surprise was when I talked to my oldest sister, which is mm -hmm. seven years older. Okay. She is actually the only one who is alive today who can mm -hmm. really say, yes, I know that you exist. Mm -hmm. And we all, when she told us that, we are all, all like, what? Yeah. <laughs> because she was seven. And she, okay. she told me that when she came home, she found our mother crying and she mm. was asking with seven years, oh, mama, why are you crying? And then yeah. she was like adding, a, and where is the baby? Mm. And then my mother told her, wow. the baby is not anymore here. The baby is gone far away. Wow. And she, with seven years, felt that there was such a secret and no one talked about it that mm. she just shut her mouth wow. and thought, that the others, like my middle sister, knew about my my mm -hmm. existing, and she doesn't. So oh, I I'm so you. grateful that Gloria, my older sister, mm -hmm. is the only one who who is alive mm -hmm. who can really say today, yes, I know that you exist, mm -hmm. and I know that you are my sister. Wow! And this is goosebumps. This is I really love hope. Cool. Crazy. Yeah. Yes. Um, Cecilia said, "I also have a thirty. I also was a thirty-five year old secret. I have a cousin. Oh, did I already say that one? Who was already adopted." Um, Jim said, we were all so special. That's why they kept us a secret laughing faces. <laughs> Maybe. Um, <laughs> Cecilia said, wow, that's so intense. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. And as, as I, I really uh, want to, to let every adoptee know is, mm -hmm. oh, as I, I have to really mention again, I know that it's, it's, it's cool and it's helpful if you have information. Mm -hmm. But you can really be yourself and live in peace without this. Mm -hmm. Because I left it until January last year. And also, if I haven't found my sister, I will do the same thing today. Even I didn't have the contact with my sisters. Mm -hmm. And this, this thing, and also I have to really mention this one. Yeah. Which is just a simple piece of paper. My passport... Oh even i always say even if you are not traveling yep. this one was so important to That's me sure. mm -hmm. you don't have to travel to your uh, roots if you don't want to yep. but i always said try it try mm -hmm. it out maybe you get some answers yep. some feelings that you can after say okay that was good for me or i don't need that that's okay and you don't have to go back but only having this piece of paper in yeah. your hands it's also healing for me it's part of my healing and yeah. i got it one year ago so oh okay so it's been about a year yeah hi anna wow that was intense yeah, i always feel like when people when adoptees share their stories they are so intense and it's yeah it's still for so me much. it's still for me mm -hmm. and and yeah also for me now um because my sisters, of course, told me about our mother. I know now a lot of, of answers that I had. Mm -hmm. And I understand now why I was given away. And I have to really say, and I always mention it again and again and again, mm -hmm. my adoption was the greatest gift of my life. Mm -hmm. Because 
I know that my mother had to give me away because I was a secret. Yep. They told my parents that I was to really, um, I was a, a product from a cousin, they say. I don't believe it, but they say. And my middle sister, she was uh, also a product from a violation. Mm -hmm. So I know how my mother was suffering. Yeah. Can you imagine in the 70s, she was from the eight siblings, siblings the only one who had an, a husband. She wasn't mm -hmm. married. Mm -hmm. And she had already two girls from two different kind of men. Okay. And if the family knew about the third one, yeah. and her life was from then a mess, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she was suffering, and she was, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to imagine what happened mm -hmm. if the family knew about my existence. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. she, I, I probably, I would say that she probably die, will die earlier than in the 80s. She died with mm -hmm. 49 years. So oh, she oh, died oh. at my age. Yeah, she was young. And I know that her life wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. wasn't, she was a hard worker. Mm -hmm. She went to school just, I think, uh, the necessary five years and that's yep. it. Mm -hmm. She was working from very young until she died. So mm -hmm. it wasn't funny for her. Yeah. And I really understand why mm -hmm. today I understand it and I accepting it. Yep. That's good. Um, Anna said, hey, good morning. My adoptee life said, I feel so lucky that my search was pretty easy. Cynthia asked, how old were you when you found your sisters? I was 49 one year ago. One yeah. year ago. Um, Cynthia said, sending love. Jim said, my bio mother had two kids already. Mm -hmm. I was a one night stand. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Thank you. Me too. Yep. An obligated one night stand, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, that yeah. doesn't define me, you know, Jim, and, and all the one who are listening. That doesn't define me. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And my, my mission or my, 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 yeah, I would say my mission is to yeah. really do the best out of my life. Mm -hmm. I could go back as I was 48 years, yep. uh, uh, feeling pity about myself or pointing fingers. And I was just, um, um, I don't know, I, I was so mad. I didn't yeah. have any self-esteem. I was really like walking mm -hmm. uh, during the day. I was like, and I'm really like that. I see pictures yeah. when I was at school, for example, or I was a teenager. In all the pictures, I'm... Yeah, not smiling. Mm. So I really un understood that I have just one life. Yeah. I have this life. Mm -hmm. And I want to make the best out of it. Yeah. Because when I die, I don't want to look back and regret and, to, mm -hmm. and say, oh... I wish I, w I had done this and I wish I had done that because I saw a video from, from uh, oh, let me think about his name, Prince EA, Prince EA. Yep. He made a video that is, this is the main reason that elderly people, when they are dying, they regret. Mm. They regret not having done the things. And when I hear that a few years ago, it may click for me. And I said, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Jim says, so true. I had a long, lot of anger all of my life. Yeah, this is part, this is part of our adoption trauma, mm -hmm. Jim. I was too. I remember when I was a kid, I, I, don't, I don't know how my parents made it with me. I really don't know. Yeah. I was screaming, biting, kicking mm -hmm. around me. And like, I don't know. My parents, I they, they, I think they were ashamed of me because I was really like, ah! Cree, cra really getting crazy when I was young. Yeah. And do you remember that? Or is that something your parents told you about? I remember that. Oh, wow. I remember that. Wow. Yeah. And I really feel, feel now not well because I was really kicking my parents mm. and biting mm. my parents. Trust me. Yeah. Um, word to the mom said, thank you for sharing. So inspirational. Thank um, you. Pat is asking... How do you navigate your relationship with your sisters from a distance? I found my sisters at 38 and I'm navigating. Yeah. Um, I have to say my, I was lucky that I grew up, I grew up my first 
seven years because my Swiss parents went to Colombia for work. Mm-hmm. I had the luck that I grew up for the first seven years in Colombia. Okay. And as you maybe know, the first seven years until about 12 are the most important ages for every child. This mm-hmm. is the, how, how the child um, gets this, this um, uh, how do you say, these this beliefs and, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, building up the, 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 his, his human being. And after we went back to Switzerland, and then my parents or my father went to work to, to another Latin American country, to Nicaragua. And so I was lucky that with 10, mm-hmm. I went back to a country that were Spanish uh, speaking. Yeah, I was going to ask so, you to speak Spanish. Just so for me, it's, of course, very helpful that I speak perfectly Spanish so I can really relate and, and, and talk to my sisters. And it's, it's really funny because with my middle sister, I'll show you the picture. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. The, with the gray hair, this is Gloria, the oldest one, yep. which knows about my life. And she okay. is Luz Mary, the middle one. Yep. And we are, if you see me, we are like more similar to each yeah. other. Yep. And it's funny, since we met, we are like so close. Mm. We, we send us message, uh, I don't know, every second day. Yep. Of course, we communicate through WhatsApp and okay. we, we do some video calls through WhatsApp. And this is the, the only way to communicate together. But it's okay. Better than yeah. nothing. Yeah. But That's I have really a close relationship to her. Of course, with both. But the older one is a little bit yep. more own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I have to say that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cecilia said, That's awesome. You're fluent. I'm still learning. People yeah. are sending heart. Faces, Kat said, love this. Sarah Thank said, you. they all are so cute. The language, the language barrier. I know that this is also something, something that most of the adoptees holds back. Mm-hmm. But I really have to say, my husband is Swiss, one hundred percent Swiss, and he is not the language guy. Really yeah. not. He is since about twelve years in Spanish lessons. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't know it until today. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I can really say, you can learn it. Mm-hmm. You can learn it. It doesn't matter how it sounds after. Yeah. Or go, to, go back to your, uh, to your uh, country and like travel for, for one month. For mm-hmm. example, in, in, in Colombia, I really have to say, and I see it in my husband, if you go to Colombia to, just to travel around, you will learn very yeah very fast and perfect yeah. because the Spanish in Colombia is very clear. Yeah. So my husband, for example, since he, he's coming with me to Colombia, he, he understands so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And really, as I said, you can learn everything. You can learn skating at the age of 47, as I did. You can learn surfing at the age of 45, as I did. So you can also learn to speak a language. Yeah. You don't have to be perfect, mm-hmm. but you can do it. Yep. Yep. Um, word to the mom said, so true. Yeah. Um, yes, Cecilia, as he is. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, yes. So it sounds like I want to have you share a little bit about your own mentor program. Um, and kind of how all you just shared kind of ties into how you started your own um, mentorship. Jenny said you are such an inspiration. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I, when I realized what I have done with my life, mm-hmm. um, my healing and my transformation, and really, I'm like, I just love myself from the bottom to the top, really. I can really say that after my healing, I really love myself. And I understood that there are a lot of adoptees out there still that they are in the same situation that I was at 48. And I felt the inner urge. I felt my heart desire. And I also discovered that this is part of my mission. Every single human being has a mission in this life. This is also a thing that we don't learn at school which is so important, but no one speaks about. Mm -hmm. And I learned with my life mentor and with my life coach that there is a a mission in your life, something that you are good at. And I was really like, oh, I'm not good at anything. (laughs) I don't know. I I was really like that. I don't know. 
Okay. A lot of us are. Yeah. But as soon as I <laughs> have uh, done all this inner work and, and I found my sister and all that, I got it. I got it. And I was, this is so clear. Mm. I can show you, the other adoptees, how you can do it. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh my God, it was like in front of my face for 50 years, I didn't yeah. get it. It clicked. <laughs> exactly. So I created this program with all the tools that I have learned and I have mm -hmm. going through. And also I work together with a, a trauma therapist, which is mm -hmm. awesome. She's yeah, uh, situated in Miami. Mm -hmm. She speaks Spanish and English. So I work with her. So I know that the deeper inner work, the deeper yep. inner work, you should really have uh, an expert. Yeah, someone trained. Yep. Exactly. Which can help you go over it. Mm -hmm. But the small things like starting creating your own day or like um, being the best version of yourself, I can show you too. I can mm -hmm. give you all my tools. Yep. I can give you... Uh, the books that I have read. Mm -hmm. And so this is how my program came together. So I offer today in my adoptees healing, two different kinds of mentorship. So you can work with me for three months or for six months. Mm -hmm. And I show you how to connect yourself to your inner human being. I show you how you can when you are stressed out and everything, it's too much, or you attract once again, this kind of people that always appears in your life, how you can really come back to your center and how you can really rebuild your aura, mm -hmm. your emotions. Um, yeah, and all this stuff that I have learned. Amazing. So you can really, it sounds really, really simple. You can really start from very small things. Yep do you in the work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in the second in the in the six month program there are including two sessions minimum with this trauma therapist okay. which of course i would suggest if you have um yeah a deeper yep. deeper desire to to heal more of course do more sessions with her yep. or search for another one but mm -hmm. really search for help is because this is also a thing that i i i wasn't used to because you, maybe you understand the people who has maybe family here in Europe. Mm -hmm. this, the Europe mentality, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm Colombian. And then I came to this Swiss family and my father was a mathematician. Oh, okay. He was, I have to really say, he was an iceberg. Yeah. He was an iceberg as a person. Today mm -hmm. I understand how, mm -hmm. why, because he also didn't learn it at his yep. home how to be lovable, how to sh express emotions, all this. And this is the thing that I missed so much during yeah. my youth that I wasn't able to get this Latino DNA that I was searching for. I was never yeah. hugged. Mm -hmm. I didn't get any kisses from my father. Yeah. And then I realized that you have to really search for help. My father did it because yeah. this generation, they don't speak about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you um, see maybe your parents or your grandparents, this is another generation. That's yep. okay. But I realize that if I don't do my work, yep. I will still passing all these limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. all these uh, wrong um, ideas that you get from your family. Mm -hmm. You will pass it on through your child, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. child of the child. And this will go on like this the whole time. And I wasn't... When I saw and I heard about my biological family, which was a, a mess, and then I came to my Swiss family, which was a mess too, yeah. I realized that this, no, sorry, but no. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I really felt that I was the one in charge, some kind in charge of doing the healing of two families. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> So I also, when I go to Colombia to see my, oh, yeah, I was just once, but I went, when I met them, I told them, to, I told to my sister, you know what? It's now time, just let the past, let it be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because for example, my older sister, she was still mad. Yeah, but my cousin, and I don't know. And when I was young and I, I really had to do also some kind of inner work in, in, yep. in maybe uh, two hours with them. And I have to tell them, you know, now I think it's time to do mm. the healing. 
Mm-hmm. I will support you. I will hold your hands, but we yep. can do it together. And it's time really to let this bad energy and this negativity on one side and to heal the whole family yeah. because we take over all these things from the ancestors mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Very true. And if I'm not doing this, I think I will be not in peace when I die. Mm-hmm. I don't have children. Yeah. I didn't, I never wanted to have children. This is maybe mm-hmm. also, I think it has to do with my adoption. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to have children. But if I had children, I, I know now that if I wouldn't have done this inner healing, I pass it to my, to my children. Yeah. And I see, for example, my brother. My brother is biological brother from my Swiss parents. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's not funny to watch, really. It's yeah. not funny. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm just going to go through some of the comments before yeah. we move on. Kat said, I speak Spanish fairly well, but with a bad internet connection and long distance, I find it can be difficult to maintain even with a common language. Yeah, I think it can be hard for sure. Yes, so of course. After yes, finding course. them after so much time, it can of course. be hard. Yeah. Um, Sarah said, a full immersion, I believe, would help me so much. Yes, I agree. I think that can be something super helpful. Um, word to the mom said yes Sarah sent a heart uh Cecilia said our affirmations part of the healing I feel that's yeah. common yeah okay. okay yes um, so important so important yeah Jim said yep my dad also I was born in 1962 I guess my dad was old school and not showing love yeah yeah this is also a part that you have to learn that you are first of all not in charge mm-hmm. of your family really yep. not mm-hmm. really not not in charge of your mother, of your father, of your sisters, of your siblings. You are not in charge. You are only in charge of yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is, you have to really understand that. And a therapist will help you with that. And the second thing is that you, ha- you have to learn to send love. For example, I watch my older brother, mm-hmm. which is really in a bad shape. Because he took, of course, also all these negative beliefs and all these limiting beliefs from our parents. I healed it, but he doesn't. And now I see extremely clear the difference between us. Mm. And I used to feel so sorry for my brother, really. I try to help him. I give him so much advices. I give him so much tips and he Mm -hmm. didn't made it. Mm-hmm. until today so mm-hmm. i the only thing what i can do now is send him love yep. but let him be yeah yep. maybe and, and it is it is like this sometimes something bad has to happen mm. to switch your mentality and you say okay now i get it yeah i think we're but all on are, the journey yeah so you are not in charge changes. of them you're all in charge of you it mm-hmm. sounds very hard it does and also for Latino mentality, can you imagine? I have also this Latino DNA. It wasn't, yeah. for me, it wasn't easy. I always thought that I have to look for my mother. I yeah. have to look for my brother, but I really not in charge. Mm-hmm. Powerful. Um, Cynthia said, wow, what a sense of responsibility. Word to the mom said, breaking the old pattern, so healing for the whole family. Kat agrees, healing of the two families. That's so powerful. Um, Jim said, I'm completely opposite of my dad. Well, that's good. Um, Cynthia said, healing yourself and attempting to heal both of your families. You seem to be a bridge of sorts. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And Cecilia, as you read, you can't have a relationship. My, my mentor, my first mentor told, told us no one hold, it really sounds very harsh, but you have to really be clear what what this means. No one is holding you a gun on your head and telling you, you have to visit your parents every Sunday when you feel inside of your heart and your soul that they are not good for you. Mm -hmm. Just don't go. (laughs) Don't go Sundays to see your parents because you feel that, or or family members or friends or whatever, Mm -hmm. because the intuition always knows better. And this is also a thing that we don't learn. We, we should learn at school to really get more into this intuition because the intuition or the, the heart always yeah. knows better, always. But we don't listen because, ah, oh, no, there are a lot of noises from the outside and you don't do this and what the neighbors would say and all yeah. this stuff. But the heart knows. Mm-hmm. And really for your 
safetyness for your well-being really you have to really set boundaries and yeah. say okay this is not working for me i don't mm -hmm. go there anymore mm -hmm. boundaries are huge it's something i'm working yeah. on currently um okay baby be brave ask if this will be saved yes i will save this to the igtv so other people can yes please it. yes and just get in contact with me my uh you see my instagram is adoptees healing my web page is the same thing adopteeshealing.com Yep. And I, of course, the first uh, introduction with each other, we, I will take my time to connect with you, to listen to you. This is for free. I want to get to know what kind of help do you need? What, how can I support you? What can I give you uh, for what I have lived through? And I will support you in, in any kind of thing. And of course, when I see and I feel that this this is too much for myself. That's why I work with, with yep. extremely beautiful and professional people. But I really encourage you to do it for just for yourself. You don't have to do it for your kids, for your husband, for you, because mm -hmm. you are the greatest love of your life. Yes. You have to learn this and you will learn it. If you are open to do it, you can really do it because I did it. So if I did it, anyone else can do it, really. Awesome. Um, Cecilia said, same with my adoptive sister. She's adopted from Guatemala. She still hasn't healed. Yeah. She said, I can't have a relationship with her for my own sake. Yeah. Good, Cecilia. It's really good. Yeah. It's, it's, it sounds harsh, but it's good yeah. because you are, um, you have to heal yourself first. Of course, the human being are, are able to help others, but you need to heal yourself first. Yep. This is also a thing that we don't learn at school and no one speaks about and no one told, told us. You have to heal yourself to support others. Mm -hmm. right. There is nothing else you can do. Mm -hmm. And this is also why we adoptees are such empath. And, are. and all of us, you know that, yeah. even, all of <laughs> us think that we are the, the, the big uh, friend because she needs help and he needs help and he's so poor and she is but sorry you have to really do your inner work first and after you will be so strong and so full of love to help others that you really are able to support them and you don't get under mm -hmm. So you lift others up with yourself, with your energy, with your love. And this is the intention for every human being. Mm -hmm. So very, important. Very true. Yes, it is. Um, Sarah said, same here. I heard Shannon said, intuition is so important. I think especially as an adoptee, listening to your intuition yeah. can be so hard. Yeah, of course. <laughs> because we are used to have these external voices. Mm -hmm. we we learn to listen to our father we learn to listen to the teacher yeah. we learn to listen to religion but no one learn you to listen to your heart mm. and because we don't learn in that school it's a little bit more difficult yeah, it can be to hard. connect yourself again mm -hmm. but you can do it it's not easy i always say it's not easy i was when I did my mentorship program I, for one year, I was crying nine months. I just, it was so, today I have to really laugh, but on that yeah. time it wasn't, it wasn't funny. funny, but we <laughs> met in this, in these weekends and the door went open. I went, ah, I love you. Ah. <laughs> nine months. But suddenly wow. it was so, for me, so amazing. Mm -hmm. After nine months, we had also this, this uh, breakthrough weekend. And suddenly okay. I was there like, oh, whoa, wh yeah. what, what is going on? And mm -hmm. one of, of these friends told me, hey, what's wrong with you? You are not crying. And then I get it. And I was like, shit, I heal. <laughs> Everything is out. Yeah. Wow. It was amazing. And, you know, this, this inner feeling that you have, you really feel like Superman. Yeah. I really don't ex ex exaggerate. You go yep. out and you are like, okay, <laughs> what can I can do, do anything. Where we go. <laughs> really, it's yeah. so cool. Really, you have to do, really, you have to feel this. I would love to give you all this kind of feeling that you can maybe also just feel it for five minutes, but it's yeah. so worthy, so mm -hmm. worthy and so necessary. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, let me just finish. Sarah said, I have wanted to protect my heart in a healthy way through my adoption experience. Gracias, Cecilia. That's good. Um, Jim said, yep, just learned that about self-love about three years ago and not always trying to be a people pleaser. Yes. Well, <laughs> Catalina I... said, yes. I mean, Catalina. Uh, Maria said, yes, Catalina, listen to ourselves. Yeah. Um, okay, so we only have about five minutes left. I yep. did. We did get a question through our Instagram story we shared yesterday, and this one was from Elena, and she was wondering what your first mentor session was like. Uh, my first mental session is, of course, crying, mm. crying, but it was the first time because it was in a room with, with also like 50 people or more. Oh, okay. And I had the courage to stand up because my mentor, I don't, I don't remember exactly. She was asking yeah. uh, about the situation and she told, okay, someone wants to share and I stand up. And I, I'm really not the person who is always in the middle and shining and whatever. Mm -hmm. I stood up, I took the microphone, and I could barely speak. I remember I, mo I was more crying than speaking. Yeah. But it was the first time in 48 years that I spoke in public mm -hmm. that I am an adoptee. Oh, wow. This is also a thing that marked me because... I had the luck that I don't, I didn't have to e e explain myself. My parents are both like a little bit dark and uh, mm -hmm. the people around always said, oh, Catalina, you're looking like your father. And we were like, yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I didn't have to explain myself, but yeah. I also wasn't allowed to speak about my adoption because my parents in the 80s, they told me that, uh, yeah, don't tell it to your friends at school yeah. because they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't able to speak. I didn't meet any adoptee until I was 19. 19 wow. was the first time when I met an, ado an adoptee. Wow. And I spoke with him and I was like, oh my God, he had really a rough life. Mm. And this, is, this was, um, to give the question back, this was the first time when I really said, so now stopping with secrets, I was a secret when I was born. I stopped okay. with this secret thing in two okay. families and I speak clearly to anyone else. I am an adoptee. Mm -hmm. That was it. Wow. That is powerful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, Kat said such a big moment. Yes. Yeah, so yeah it was. I felt so bad, but it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a releasing. It's also part of the healing. Speaking mm -hmm. out in my family they are swiss you never speak about emotions you yeah. never speak about love you don't speak about money and i was like that's why i couldn't express myself mm -hmm. i had this clothes because the whole family wasn't able to speak about things and then i was okay now it i have to stop doing the same things as my parents yeah um uh, i heard shannon said yes it's so wild to be connected with adoptees <laughs> later at as an adult, yes, for sure. Yeah, Jim, I would love to hug you too. I know. Jim is so supportive and everybody here, thank you so much yeah. for all the support. I have to really say I'm so grateful that you are so open to listen and to express yourself and to say what you have done and what you have going through. This is so important to speak about the healing. This is so important to speak in front of people and yeah. really encourage each other to do and to be here and that we are such beautiful human beings mm -hmm. even if we are adoptees yes yes um so we have about two more minutes so catalina i just want you to share your contact information again in case anybody needs it and we do also have her information posted on our ig um she has a whole feature on there so all of her information Yay. as well but yeah if you quickly. yeah it's very simple adoptees Yes. Adoptees Healing altogether.com. Instagram, it's also Adoptees Healing. Mm -hmm. And I, what else? Ah, I just uh, uh, get myself into the clubhouse. Oh, okay. There, there I am with my name, Catalina. Okay. Okay. Catalina Franger. This is my Swiss family name. It's difficult to pronounce, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it is yeah. how it is. Okay. <laughs> And so you can get in touch with anyway. So the simplest way is Instagram or go to my homepage, adoptiesealing.com. Uh, send me a WhatsApp, a signal, 
uh, write an email, let's get in, in touch with each other. Let me really uh, support you in any kind of question that you have. And yeah. if I don't ans know the answer, I can really support you with yeah. uh, people who can give you the answers or books that you can read. All the books. <laughs> or mantras that you. you can say. Or, <laughs> yeah. Um, everybody is thanking you for sharing. Yes, thank you, Maria. thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I just Absolutely. want to let you know that you are a wonderful, unique human being. And please, please shine your light because there is a reason why you are here. There was also a reason why you were adopted. It doesn't matter what was in the past. Of, yeah, I know it doesn't matter, but it doesn't define you. It's time to do the best out of it today, now. Your family need it, your children need it, your husband need it, mm -hmm. your pets need it, and you need it anyway. You yeah. are the greatest love of your life. You and no one else. What a great start to a Saturday. Thank you so much, Karen. Yeah, really and now go it. out and hug everyone in your house. <laughs> Yes. Even is it's a tree, hug the tree. Really, it's not a joke. <laughs> hug the tree. Awesome. Thank you so much. Everybody's still thanking you. This went really well. Thank Hail you, to too. That. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> gracias, mujeres bellas. Gracias, hermanas. Muchas gracias por esta, por esta conversación tan bella. Muchas gracias. En verdad, de todo corazón. I'm here to support you. Just get in touch with me, really. It's so necessary. I really, really? had the same experience as you mm -hmm. two years ago. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank, Thank you, too, Helen. Megan. Have a nice weekend, everyone. You, too. Bye, everybody. Love you. Thank you. Adios. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>